and testosterone in the ashwagandha group increased by Hey guys, Fitness Science. Today, this is the third series on natural testosterone boosters, and we're going to be taking a look at ashwagandha. This is similar to the other two videos I've done previously on Tonkat Ali, as well as Fidogia agrestis, in that the root is powderized and turned into a supplement that people have been taking, and it's supposed to boost testosterone. But let's take a look at the literature and see if it actually stacks up. There have been two main studies um, on humans. One was done in 2015, where they took 57 males aged between 18 to 50 years old, and over eight weeks, they gave them either 300 milligrams of the root or a placebo. They said, go and do a program of resistance training, and this included squatting, leg extension, seated leg curl, amongst a lot of other exercises. And this was done mainly for two sets throughout the entire program, starting with high reps, and then the reps came down a little bit over the course of the eight weeks. Let's take a look at what they actually found. Muscle size didn't really increase over the um, eight week period, apart from the arm size of the participants. But interestingly, bench press strength and leg extension strength was significantly increased over controls. And muscle recovery parameters, including creatine kinase, which is a key parameter of how well your body is adapting to loads, in that creatine kinase is basically an enzyme involved in muscle recovery. It's specific to muscle recovery because when the muscles are stressed, like in a resistance training program, the muscles actually undergo damage. And when they're damaged, the creatine kinase that's involved in the fluid around the muscle actually leaks out into the serum. And that's then picked up on a blood test. And it is basically a marker of muscle damage. But what happens when you resistance train is you adapt to the loads as you get stronger. So a load, maybe hundred kilos on a squat, suddenly eight weeks later, Later, you can do that easily. Creatine kinase will not be high in serum anymore because your muscles are not undergoing damage in order to lift that weight anymore because you can easily do it and you've adapted to that level of resistance training. And basically what happened over the course of the eight weeks was both groups had a decrease in creatine kinase, as you can see from this graph, indicating basically that both groups adapted to the stimulus and essentially got stronger. But what happened was there was a significant decrease even post-intervention in the ashwagandha group with creatine kinase, essentially saying that it had some measurable impact on improving muscle damage. Pretty much the biggest takeaway here is that ashwagandha may actually improve recovery in resistance training, which is absolutely huge. And there was also a significant decrease in the body fat percentage between the ashwagandha and placebo group. As you can see, the ashwagandha group had a significantly bigger decrease in body fat when compared to the placebo group. And testosterone in the ashwagandha group increased by almost 100 points from pre to post intervention. So that was a significantly big change in the treatment group that was given ashwagandha. The control group actually had a slightly um, like a 20-ish point increase 18 point increase in the in their testosterone levels but uh definitely there was a bigger increase in testosterone in the ashwagandha group so to sum up study one they got stronger they had an increase in testosterone they had less creatine kinase which basically means they were recovering better and their muscles were not undergoing the same amount of damage and their muscle size didn't really change too much apart from the arms but overall the testosterone did increase and ashwagandha looks to be pretty good in this study. Study two was more looking at the mechanisms of why ashwagandha may actually increase testosterone. So this was a 60 day study in 2019 and it actually took 60 healthy adults by all accounts, apart from the fact that they either had stress or anxiety and they administered them 240 milligrams of ashwagandha daily, as well as a anxiety rating and a depression anxiety stress scale score that they received throughout the study, as well as at the beginning. Now, the results, there was a 41% reduction in the anxiety rating scale. There wasn't really a difference in the depression anxiety stress scale, but a 41% decrease in the anxiety scale is pretty significant. There was a positive trend of increasing testosterone and the women didn't really have any change in testosterone, which makes sense when we get into the mechanisms later on, but the men had an 11.4% increase in their testosterone levels versus pretty much no change in the males that were not receiving uh, ashwagandha. And it significantly decreased cortisol in both groups by 23% and decreased DHEA by 8%. Now DHEA and cortisol are secreted from the adrenal cortex in humans. And studies have shown that when we are stressed, we actually secrete more of both of these hormones. So in a way, cortisol and DHEA can sort of serve as markers of stress or anxiety in humans. And essentially other studies have provided a mechanism as to why ashwagandha can increase testosterone. Basically what happens is cortisol has been shown to 
affect the binding of luteinizing hormone on the luteinizing hormone receptors in the actual lytic cells themselves. So cortisol affects the binding of LH and therefore affects the downstream steroidogenesis and testosterone production that the lytic cells are supposed to usually go through. And basically what happens is cortisol can bind to that receptor and then affect the ability of luteinizing hormone to then exert its effect on boosting testosterone levels. And the proof for this is that previous studies with rats where they've treated them with dexamethasone um, which is basically acts like cortisol um, in the body, severely impaired testicular function in the rats, but it also decreased luteinizing hormone receptor content itself. So the binding affinity for luteinizing hormone was therefore severely reduced in the testes of these rats. And as a result, without luteinizing hormone binding to the testes, uh, testosterone can't be produced really as well as it would have been if cortisol wasn't there. So basically the way that ashwagandha works is because it reduces anxiety and DHEA and cortisol, it basically allows the HPTA access to send out luteinizing hormone to the testes and the testes can then bind luteinizing hormone and the lytic cells can create testosterone without the inhibition that higher levels of cortisol, especially in stressed people, would exert on the lytic cells. So really what we have here is a route that can and decrease levels of stress um, measured by cortisol and DHEA, but also it can um, basically improve testosterone, not directly, but more as an indirect mechanism by reducing cortisol and therefore freeing up the luteinizing hormone receptors in the lighting cells. Um, this one gets a tick from me. It seems legit. It would be nice to have a few more longitudinal studies done in humans that went for a bit longer than eight weeks. But overall, it seems pretty promising. It doesn't directly increase testosterone secretion. It's more as a result of an indirect drop of cortisol that it can then allow testosterone to be secreted in more quantity as a result of LH binding to the receptor. Um, yeah. It seems legit, and this one definitely gets a tick from me. The dosage, I would say, would be similar to the studies that were that were provided here, around that uh, 240 to like 300 milligram uh, mark in terms of taking the route. And yeah, the research stacks up for ashwagandha. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My next video is going to be on another natural testosterone booster, which has even more research behind it, called fenugreek, and has a completely different mechanism of increasing testosterone. If you're interested, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. I am hoping to get the research out to you guys to make smarter supplement decisions and boosting your testosterone in more healthy and science-backed ways. Um, this whole channel is about providing you the literature to hit your fitness goals with the backing of science and the research. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next video. Fitness Science, signing out.